I'm JP Hornick, Chair of the College Faculty Bargaining Team. As you may know, the College Employer Council team walked away yesterday from negotiations without responding to our offer for voluntary binding arbitration and has also asked the conciliator for a no board report. They've also asserted that the faculty team presented a take it or leave it offer and nothing could be further from the truth. The faculty team offered to refer outstanding issues to binding arbitration, and that would see a neutral party, in this case, William Kaplan, issue a binding decision on which proposals make their way into our next collective agreement. It was a good faith attempt on our end to avoid additional stress on faculty and students alike and to once again try and avoid further escalation. Unfortunately, the CEC has chosen a different path forward. It's also false for the CEC to assert that both mediation and conciliation failed. Mediation didn't fail, it concluded and bargaining continued. Conciliation also did not fail. The CEC team left the table and the conciliator is still preparing the report that they requested. At every stage of negotiations, the faculty team has attempted to avoid labor disruption by compromising, by incorporating the CEC team's concerns and ideas and blending them with our own, and through creative problem solving, such as voluntary binding arbitration. The CEC team, by contrast, appears to be playing from the same playbook as they have in the past several rounds of bargaining. They've denied that faculty issues exist, they've delayed implementation for changes, and they've bargained toward impasse. The CEC team's decision yesterday to ask the conciliator for a no board report leaves us in a really vulnerable position as faculty. This report removes the last remaining step before the employer is legally able to either lock out faculty, which they say they'd never do, or to unilaterally impose terms and conditions of employment 16 days after the no board report is received. The imposition of terms and conditions is a very real threat. The CEC exercised this the first time they had the option in 2009, and it's a nuclear option. The employer can literally dictate whatever they'd like to have as their preferred working conditions for faculty. This can include changing compensation, changing workload, uh, eliminating academic freedom, two-tiering conditions, and that includes different conditions for different programs or even in different colleges, or even the right for the union to file grievances or for individual faculty to file grievances. These are all areas that the CEC team has targeted in the language that they tabled this round. A successful strike vote is faculty's only recourse in the face of imposition. Our right to resist imposed terms and conditions is absolutely limited without a strike vote. A strike vote allows faculty to engage in a wide variety of coordinated labor actions, and that's up to and including a strike. Recently, we've seen other unions in the education sector adopt a variety of creative labor disruptions to demonstrate the value of their work and the importance of their demands. These have included work to rule actions. In other words, when you follow the strict letter of the collective agreement in your work, there have been refusals to perform overtime, strikes that target specific work tasks like email or uh, coordinator responsibilities or things that are more appropriately the duties of your chair or associate dean, and or rolling strikes that target different workplaces. There are also opportunities for info pickets and solidarity actions. Above all though, the strike vote is a vote for solidarity as a bargaining unit. It forces management to negotiate our proposals seriously rather than just walking away from negotiations and unilaterally imposing working conditions. It states that as a union, we will stand up and stand together in the face of the employer's escalation and aggression. The other option to the CEC uh, that they can exercise is a forced offer vote. If they believe their current offer is one acceptable to faculty, they can take that directly to faculty for a vote. They can do it once. As we have outlined, however, the employer's current offer contains several concessions, and that includes a moratorium for several years on the union local's ability to gain new full-time faculty positions through grievance, it also includes language that would threaten the job security of counselors and increased limits on which partial load faculty are eligible to exercise their seniority rights through the partial load registry. It also doesn't address key faculty issues in any way, shape or form. 
by refusing both voluntary binding arbitration and by not exercising their option to call a forced offer vote, the CEC team has made it clear that they know their current offer is not good enough for faculty. And to obscure this, they're trying to distract faculty by painting their team as the ones who are unreasonable and unwilling to compromise. In response, we encourage you to reach out to your college presidents. They're the folks that actually direct the College Employer Council. And we encourage them to tell the CEC team to come back to the table, finish negotiations on issues where the teams are close, and to agree to refer outstanding issues to voluntary binding arbitration. As we move into the end of the semester, the faculty team has left that option on the table. It's simply up to the CEC now to demonstrate their stated commitment to labor stability and improved labor relations, rather than forcing their agenda on faculty and students. Thank you.